Hello from Who Died Today America, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Michael Ward, the esteemed guitarist known for his pivotal contributions to the Wallflowers during their most influential period from 1995 to 2001, has passed away at the age of 57. Tracy Ward Hartfield, his sister, announced the news of his passing in a touching Facebook statement, saying that complications from diabetes caused his premature death on April 2, 2024. The loss has caused tremendous pain among his family, friends, and admirers, emphasizing the transient essence of life and the significance of expressing love to people we care about. His time with the Wallflowers constituted a watershed moment in the band's career, particularly his contributions to their critically praised albums Bringing Down the Horse in 1996 and Breach in 2000. These albums, which produced songs such as Sixth Avenue Heartache, not only defined the band's sound, but also had a lasting impact on the 1990s rock music landscape. Recognizing his invaluable contributions, the Wallflowers paid him a poignant homage, commemorating his distinctive talents and lasting influence inside the band and beyond. Despite his success, his time with the Wallflowers was not without its problems, including a falling out with lead singer Jacob Dylan. This conflict prompted Ward to consider leaving the band sooner than he did in 2001, a choice motivated by his desire for a more collaborative and creative role in song production, which he believed was dwindling with time. His legacy is one of significant musical influence, innovation, and a reminder of how one artist can shape the progression of a band's sound and success. While the music industry mourns his passing, they also recognize the joy and artistry Ward brought into countless lives through his songs. His passing leaves a vacuum in the hearts of those who knew him and respected his work, but his contributions will continue to resound, ensuring his memory is woven into the fabric of rock music history. Lynn Loring, a versatile talent whose career transitioned from acting to becoming a trailblazer among female executives in Hollywood, passed away at the age of 80. Her death at Providence Cedars Sinai Tarzana Medical Center followed a fight with chronic ailments, bringing an end to a tremendous career in the entertainment world. Respecting her legacy, her family postponed the public news of her death so that they might mourn privately. Loring originally charmed fans as a young actress in the long-running CBS soap opera Search for Tomorrow, which premiered in 1951. Her depiction as Patty Barron, Joanne Gardner's daughter, demonstrated her innate skill and laid the groundwork for a diversified acting career that includes roles in The Many Loves of Dobie Gillis and The FBI. Her roles in Yalia Kazan's Splendor in the Grass, Pressure Point, and Journey to the Far Side of the Sun, alongside then-husband Roy Thins, cemented her standing in Hollywood. After taking a break from performing to focus on her family, she recreated her profession behind the scenes. She returned to casting before joining Aaron Spelling Productions, where she created successful telefilms and served as Vice President of Development and Talent. Her participation in developing the smash comedy Mr. Mom demonstrated her innovative approach, with the film becoming a cultural and financial triumph. Her executive abilities shown clearly at MGM Television, where she oversaw the successful adaptation of In the Heat of the Night into a TV series, demonstrating her vision and commitment to diversity in storytelling. Loring rose to prominence as president of MGM Television, pushing creative programs and breaking barriers for women in the business. Aside from her professional accomplishments, her legacy is defined by her pioneering attitude, contributions to evolving television storytelling, and role in opening the way for future generations of women in entertainment. Loring's incredible path from child actor to top executive, as told by her daughter Casey Lee, makes an unforgettable stamp on Hollywood, reminding us of the immense impact one person can have on numerous aspects of the entertainment industry. 
The Reverend Cecil Chip Murray, a beacon of hope and a unifying force during one of Los Angeles' most turbulent times, has passed away at the age of 94. For 27 years as pastor of the First African Methodist Episcopal Church, his leadership stretched beyond the pulpit, fulfilling the roles of community healer and visionary during the 1992 Los Angeles riots. He died of natural causes at his house in the View Park District of Los Angeles. His leadership of fame, the city's oldest black church, saw its membership grow from 250 to over 18,000, establishing it as a hub for political and social discourse. His reign attracted national figures, emphasizing the church's major role in tackling urban and racial issues. Murray's devotion to community empowerment grew after his pastoral career when he worked at the University of Southern California, where he taught over a thousand civic engagement and community development professionals. The 1992 Los Angeles riots were a watershed moment in his legacy. His attempts to heal the city's scars and promote peaceful reconciliation demonstrated his strong dedication to social justice and community restoration. His message, which distinguished between setting and initiating riot flames, struck a chord with many, underlying structural inequities while advocating for positive change. His efforts, most notably fame renaissance, showcased his unique approach to economic development and community investment, resulting in thousands of employment and considerable corporate money for South Los Angeles regeneration. His leadership not only repaired physical structures, but also instilled hope and dignity in the people. Murray was born on September 26, 1929, in Lakeland, Florida, and his life was dedicated to service and scholarship. His military service, which won him a Soldier's Medal of Valor, as well as his academic achievements, served as the framework for his profound pastoral work. At fame, he developed lively worship methods that appealed to a wider population, resulting in a more engaged and energetic congregation. The city mourns the passing of a man who was more than simply a pastor, but also a source of strength, solidarity, and compassion. His legacy exemplifies the power of faith and community to overcome misfortune and create a brighter future. Murray is survived by his son, Drew, and his passion and affection have left an imprint on the community that will last forever. Barbara Rush, a radiant talent whose career in Hollywood spanned over six decades, has left a lasting legacy on the world of entertainment. She passed away at the age of 97 in Westlake Village, leaving behind a legacy as a versatile actress who graced both the silver screen and television with her presence, elegance, and unquestionable talent. Her daughter, Claudia Cowan, communicated the news of her quiet death, noting the poignant timing on Easter Sunday, a special day for Rush, and now a date with new meaning for her family. Beginning her career in the early 1950s, she soon rose to prominence in Hollywood, appearing in classics such as Magnificent Obsession, Bigger Than Life, and The Young Philadelphians. Her performances with celebrities such as Rock Hudson, James Mason, and Paul Newman demonstrated her ability to hold her own against some of the biggest names of the day. Her roles in sci-fi films such as When Worlds Collide and It Came From Outer Space have earned her a particular place in the hearts of genre enthusiasts. Despite her omission from the list of Oscar and Emmy candidates, Russia's contributions were not overlooked. She received a Golden Globe as the most promising female rookie for her performance in It Came From Outer Space, demonstrating her initial effect on the business. Beyond her honors, Rush was celebrated inside the business, with her name appearing in the 1975 film Shampoo, confirming her legacy as a Hollywood icon. Her personal life, which included marriages to actor Jeffrey Hunter and publicist Warren Cowan, reflected the highs and lows of her professional career. Rush moved from the big screen to prominent television roles over the years, including a regular position on Peyton Place and appearances on Batman and Seventh Heaven, demonstrating her adaptability and continuing appeal. Barbara Rush leaves behind a history of film and television accomplishments, a family who adored her, and a plethora of followers that admired her work from a distance. Her contributions to the arts will continue to be recognized, ensuring that her memory and talent are remembered for future generations. 
Rush is survived by her children, including Fox News senior correspondent Claudia Cowan. Her impact on Hollywood and beyond will be remembered. William Kidston, a distinguished photographer whose career spanned decades in the entertainment industry, passed away at the age of 68. The cause of death was prostate cancer, which he bravely battled at his Denver home while surrounded by loved ones. His legacy is defined not only by his professional accomplishments, but also by his distinct presence on the Hollywood scene, which is instantly identifiable by his signature eye patch. His work was defined by his extraordinary ability to capture the essence of Hollywood's most spectacular events, such as the Oscars, Grammy Awards, and Daytime Emmys. His work also included picture campaigns for the annual Hollywood Christmas Parade, which demonstrated his versatility and dedication to his profession. Kidston spent the last six years of his career working as a staff photographer for the Hollywood Museum, which is housed in the famous Max Factor building. This employment allowed him to capture an important period in Hollywood history, solidifying his position within the business. Kidston grew up in Azusa and West Covina, California, and attended Cal State University Long Beach, graduating in 1980. His talent and dedication to his industry were acknowledged with three regional Emmy Awards for his work on LA City View 35, demonstrating his photographic prowess and passion. His significance went beyond his professional life. He was highly engaged in his community, giving his time and abilities to his Los Angeles church and other nonprofit organizations. He was very passionate about campaigning for the disabled population, exhibiting his commitment to giving back and making a difference. Kidston lived by the slogan, the two most important days in your life are the day you're born and the day you find out why. He clearly discovered his mission, as evidenced by his work, generosity, and the lives he impacted, leaving an unforgettable impression on the globe. Jean Allison, a versatile actress whose career spanned across television and film, passed away at her home in Rancho Palos Verdes at the age of 94. Allison made an unmistakable impression on Hollywood with a productive career that featured her talent in a wide range of roles, from television dramas to blockbuster films. Her acting career began with a remarkable debut in Edge of Fury, when she played a lady threatened by a psychopath, introducing her formidable screen presence. Her filmography grew over time to include performances in The Devil's Partner, The Steagle by Paul Silbert, Robert Benton's Bad Company, and Paul Schrader's Hardcore, among other films. These performances demonstrated her ability to dig into complicated characters, cementing her place among Hollywood's most regarded character performers. Born in New York on October 24, 1929, she began her acting career after attending Marymount High School in Terrytown, New York and Adelphi College. Her performance in Patricia Judry's play, Teach Me How to Cry, piqued the interest of agent Duvid Barskin, who booked her first television appearance in 1957 on CBS's General Electric Theater. Allison became a familiar face on television during the course of her three-decade career, guest starring in a wide range of iconic shows from Have Gun Will Travel, Bonanza, Hawaiian Eye, and The Rifleman to McLeod, Adam 12, The Waltons, and Highway to Heaven. Her versatility enabled her to move fluidly between genres, demonstrating her range as an actress. Her personal life included marriages and divorces with actor-director Lee Phillips and boxing trainer Jerry Boyd before marrying Philip Torvald in 1961, with whom she had a long and loving marriage until his death in 1994. Later in life, she found companionship with Oscar-nominated cinematographer Jack Koofer, with whom she remained close until his death in July 2021. Her legacy lives on via her children, Aaron, Sven, and Tina, as well as the numerous television and film performances that continue to enchant audiences. Her passion for her art, as well as her enduring presence on screen, will be remembered by both fans and peers. Breaking news of the day. News one. Colt Ford, renowned for merging country music with rap, is fighting for his life in the ICU of Banner Desert Medical Center, Arizona, following a heart attack after his recent performance. The 54-year-old artist, known for hits like Slow Ride and the original version of Dirt Road Anthem, is described as being in stable but critical condition. Ford, a former professional golfer turned country sensation, 
has made a significant impact on the music industry with his unique sound, earning number one albums in both country and rap genres. The music community and fans are holding their breath, hoping for a swift recovery for the beloved musician. News 2. Celebrated streamer Tyler Ninja Blevins, known for captivating millions on platforms like Twitch and YouTube, has declared victory over skin cancer just one week after disclosing his diagnosis. Blevins shared the uplifting update with his followers, stating, Excision was successful with clear margins. As of right now, I am officially cancer-free. This announcement comes shortly after Ninja shared the challenging news of a melanoma diagnosis following the removal of a mole from his foot. His message of gratitude for the support and prayers he received highlights the swift and positive turn in his health journey, offering hope and encouragement to his global fan base.